Hello and welcome to my video. Now, if you remember, this is one I did, um, I think, about three weeks ago. And I said I'd have something back to you in two weeks. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't, because it's now three weeks, I think. Um, life events. I won't go into details. But if you suffer from food allergies, you'll understand. So, um, glazing. I'm going to be glazing this. And uh, I've got quite a few colours. As you saw, I was putting them out at the beginning. I've got carmine, uh, Japanese red, Payne's grey, ultramarine blue, and a little bit of um, violet rouge, or red violet. So uh, off we go. I'm going to start with a bit of yellow. Now, because this is basically dry, I mean, it's not completely dry, it's slightly sticky. Um, but for demo purposes, it doesn't really matter. In fact, if, if, the, if this painting starts to crack up, uh, it doesn't matter at all because I'll just change the whole thing to make it look like uh, an antique painting covered in cracks. Let's get rid of that hair. I always do this, don't I? I, don't, I always spot them when I, when I... Well, when I should have spotted them before, but a quick bit of, little burnish there just to get the bumps away where that hair was. Um, th so anyway, if you've watched the uh, if you've watched part one of this, you'll um, you'll see how I got to this stage, and I'll put a link below so you can uh, go back and have a peep. Uh, I want to do something over here, so I'm just going to put some some yellow there. Now, because it's glazing, it doesn't matter where I go; I can go across the landscape with it. Doesn't really matter. I just want to get my sort of high spot of light in in that sort of area. And there'd probably be a little bit of a little bit of light catching these clouds here. Not much because I'm going to put blue up here and I don't want to mix them and make green. So we'll just have a little bit of a reflection up there, like so. And as, as you see, it goes over the landscape. I could, I could actually leave it there. Um, I don't know. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. I'm trying to do some quick thinking today, so I'm going to come up with I won't. And I'm going to take it off the landscape here and um, reveal what was underneath so it comes back to its full strength. There'll be a trace of yellow on there, but that's OK. So I've, I've sort of darkened up the, uh, the division between this and this. So there, there's some yellow. Didn't really take long. Um, and the next bit I'm going to do is some blue. Uh, no, I'm not. Yes, I am. No, I'm not. Which one's it going to be? No, it's not. I'm going to do um, a little bit of Payne's Grey mixed with Ultramarine. So here's the Ultramarine. Now, what I want to do with this, I want to put a little bit up in this corner here, uh, just to sort of give it more blue and, and of course this is glazing so it doesn't uh, we don't worry about brush marks they'll all go away um, and if they don't go away I'll encourage them to go away using a piece of paper or I'll go over it with uh, a big brush just to flatten it out but for the moment all I need to do is just get a piece of paper and then just do that there are no brush marks but I get the blue. So just sort of circular motion. This is a lot of oil, not a lot, not a lot of paint. So I don't know whether you'll see, maybe you'll uh, be able to compare, but that's gone from a bit of a dull grey blue to a more of a blue blue. And um, I think that's probably all I need to do up there. A little bit of paint here I want to disperse. There we go. Right. That's that bit. Now then, a, a little bit of brushwork with Payne's Grey mixed into the blue. I want something nice and dark. And I'm also going to put a little bit of red in that. So the question is, do I use Japanese red? Now, for those of you who can't see my palette, Japanese red is a really bright, vibrant red. Now, I know people are going to ask where you can get it, and I'll put a link below. And um, if you can't get it, uh, you could just use cadmium, put a bit of yellow in it, and um, 
sort of uh, tone it down. Well, you tone down the blue in cadmium red. Cadmium red's quite a sort of, it's quite a dark sort of solid red, where this is sort of light, more like a poppy colour, I suppose. Um, so I might put some of that in it, just a bit. And in fact, maybe even a bit of carmine. Now you don't need much carmine. Carmine is uh, quite potent. You don't even have to open the tube. Just just hold a tube near a canvas, and you'll never get rid of the colour. It, once it's on, it's on forever. Now, um, um, as I'm mixing it, I'm actually keeping an eye on that because I don't want it to be too. Well, it comes out sort of dark mauve, I suppose. I don't want too much of that, so I'm going to put in a bit more Payne's grey, and we will have ended up with a very interesting colour actually and um, that's what it looks like on the brush doesn't tell you a lot does it it looks dark well I'm hoping I didn't miss anything there my um, camera started uh, strangely enough telling me that my card was full it doesn't actually sort of scream out to you it just discreetly flashes on the viewfinder which means of course you won't notice it until you look at it so how about that Sony why don't you put something in there that says Oi, sort your card out. Anyway, back to painting. So I put yellow on, I put my bit of blue up the top there. Uh, I'm just going to intensify the yellow just a bit there. Now on the, on the subject of um, glazing, there is debate about whether this is what glazing is. And um, some people say or have said uh, it's just painting another layer at a later stage, which is absolutely correct. I wouldn't argue with that at all. But it's quite a, a separate technique um, because, you, funnily enough, I mean, you can use a brush, obviously, but you don't have to. You can, you can, do any, you can use anything. You can use a twig if you want. I mean, I, um, or, you know, or, or your hand. So, for instance, if I get some... Um, Shall I do this? Do I want to do this? Yeah, I do. Um, I'm going to get some white, titanium white, and I'm just going to put a little bit on my finger. And uh, I'm just going to put some here. So I could uh, I could say well okay that's a very big moon it's way too big obviously or a sun can't be too big to be the sun the sun's a fair old size isn't it so um, I could I could leave that and say well okay this is this is one of these hazy suns you get and um, there's the landscape back behind it with a little bit of light on the landscape. If I want it, do I want it? I don't know. Don't think I do actually. I think what I might do later. I'm going to mute this a little bit. That, that light colour that I put there. Do I even want to mute it? I'll show you what I could do. There's so many things you can do. I mean, let's face it. It's um, extremely flexible. You can get a you can get a brush preferably uh, one that's clean. I could use one of my big brushes, but this one will do. And what I could also do is have a bit of paper ready. And going from the dry down here, this all dry, going from there, I could do one and then give the brush a good wiping. And then I could do one from that way. Again, wipe as much off as possible so that the brush is almost completely clean. And then do one that way. Again, wipe it, keep going. So every time I swipe, I've wiped. And then I could leave that to dry and then come back and work on that later. And I'm very tempted because I want to get up into this part up here. So that's sort of um, something. Let's just a quick push that way as well. That way. 
Okay, so there's a, a sort of beginning. I could put rays of light coming from that later, but that'll be a, possibly another session. I'm not sure whether I'll video it. Maybe I will. I'll video it by popular demand. So if anybody wants to see how I can turn that into a bit of a starburst there, um, maybe we'll do that in the future. Unless I feel brave in the next uh, few minutes. So this colour that I made uh, using um, Payne's Grey, Japanese red, ultramarine, carmine, and a touch of violet rouge, quite a mix actually. That gives me an interesting colour. I, I, when, I, when I say it's interesting, uh, I'm not telling you that you must find it interesting too. All I ask of you is that you watch all of my videos many times, put it on a loop, keep watching, and then uh, start to plan your sky. The sky that I had there was okay. I don't mind it. It was sort of bearable. But I want, I've got, I can't help it. I have to have something that's got a little bit more movement and a little bit more drama. Get, I want it, it's got to be have this sort of I am a sky spreading out over your head up here so obviously bigger lumps of sky as they come over your head and usually darker and further down the painting um, slightly smaller strokes and again also at the moment doesn't matter about brush marks they'll all go let's put a few little stragglers coming out across there. Now I've got this colour coming near to a bit of orange. They may mix quite nicely. We'll see. If you if you ever um I, I always say this. Just go and look at the Turner sky if you have doubts about this sort of approach. There's some interesting things happening here. There's some bumpy bits there. Now, when I put paint on it, it pick, gets picked up in the dents and the troughs uh, and the peaks in the paint. But again, nothing to worry about. You can just sort of smear it a bit so that the eye doesn't pick it up. So there we are. Got some nice structure coming across there. I think we'll have a little bit of dark just there. And they're all sort of leading down to this point of the painting, they're pointing that way. See, there's a line, a very subtle line coming down that way. Let's have, um, let's have a few more bits up in there just to give it a bit more dimension. Because what you don't want, you see, is just a solid black or dark. You've got to have a few ups and downs in it. So there's got to be some light bits and some dark bits that will give you dimension in your painting. And um, no hard edges in skies. Oh, while I'm okay, while I'm in a talkative mood, um, I've been asked several questions lately. Uh, what gesso do I use? Well, I use the one that you get in an art shop, which is basically white acrylic paint. Um, do I paint on canvas? Do I paint on board? It's plywood. I'm only painting on plywood at the moment. I sort of um, painted on canvas for years and. Uh, now I paint on plywood and of course before canvas uh, really came along people only ever painted on wood panels or, or, or walls, plaster walls. So um, this is the sort of the ancient way of painting a landscape. What else do I want to put in the sky? In fact before I do anything to it I'm going to give it the big brush treatment and uh, this is the big brush. Reasonably clean. And all I'm going to do with this is my usual that. Hardly touching it. Just enough to take the edge off the brush marks. What should we do now? I think we will do a little bit of fancy work with the palette knife and just titanium white. And then I'll go over it again with the big brush and that will be it and it will be one of the shortest videos I've made in the last I don't know how many years 
So I'm going to put a few little strong bits of sky just around that sort of spot there. Maybe I'll, um, I'll yeah, why not? Otherwise, it's not going to look like uh, it's not going to look like much. I'm going to just put a little bit of white there. Not much, just a touch, and then clean up the landscape a bit so that it jumps back behind the hill. Hopefully, it doesn't always jump back, sometimes you have to push it. Um, what other questions while I'm fiddling around here? Someone asked how my cat was, Tiger Lily. Tiger Lily's very well. She's a very happy cat. Quite happy to pose for photographs. And um, the story behind her is quite, quite a nice story, actually. We went shopping one day. When we came back, there was a very thin cat at the door, demanding to be let in and demanding food, and um, very emaciated. I've, I've seen thin cats before, but this one was barely hanging on. So uh, we gave her some um, tuna, and um, she ate that. I think that is how she survived the first night. Couldn't get any other cat food because the shops were shut by then. Anyway, she settled in, and now she um, she's the boss, really. So a few little marks through there. This is just sort of um, you know this technique. I can't tell you how to do this bit. Just just be inventive, really. Look for look for places where. And I'm afraid this is the only way to explain it. Where you think it would look right, and it, it's, um, it's just come through practice. Um, you know, if you look at clouds, you'll know that every now and then there's a rogue, a little rogue cloud that goes off there, like that. Just decides it's going to do its own thing. Doesn't matter what's going on over there, there's always one that has to be different. So look for the difference. Maybe we'll have a little bit of a little bit of paint there, which will become a cloud. Yeah, um, I think we're almost there. Um, there is a colour I didn't use here. Which one was it? Oh no, I used them all. I was thinking of putting a bit of a bit of colour down here. I don't know. I'm still um, still thinking on that, and it may happen in the next minute or so. So stay tuned, otherwise you'll miss it. Clouds, uh, think of clouds as abstract, the abstract part of a landscape. There we go. So yeah, where's the, where is the borderline? Is this um, glazing or is it just extended painting? a reasonable question and I honestly have no idea other than it's a stage in a painting where you get a lot of flexibility uh, because the undercoat is dry doesn't matter what you do you can always retrieve it or you can just decide to do this and live an exciting life notice how so I'm, I'm using the brush differently, you see now. If I want to flatten generally, it's this. If I want to sort of push a few bits of colour around, I use the, the edge. But you see, there's so little paint there, it's not even showing up on the brush. So I'm touching white paint here, and there's no white paint there. It's, uh, it's quite fascinating. And it's all down to how, how lightly you touch it, I think. In fact, I'm pretty sure that's it. Okay, so there we go. Do I stop there? Because I think that's absolutely amazingly exciting.
Or do I do something else that is equally exciting? Uh, I'm going to just do this. So I've got some yellow in the sky there. Now it may look a bit green, that's fine. As I usually say, we get green. We get green skies. I'm just going to put a little bit of reflected light down here, just touching the landscape in a couple of places. Like so. See, didn't take long, did it? And here, yeah, a little bit of scumbling. Scumbling is basically when you're mashing up the paint with your brush. In other words, you're hoping for the best. Okay, now I think that's it, except there. Right, it's a quickie, I hope, this one. And I uh, hope you've learned something. Hope you'll come back. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It's very important. Um, and also click the thumbs up button if you like it. And uh, oh, the little bell icon, as usual. I'm sure it's where. If you, what, if you look at YouTube a lot, you know what all these things mean. But the bell icon is very important because if you don't press that, you won't get a notification when my next video will come up and um, some people have said the side effects of not sp not smacking that button is that spiders will walk on your face at night and I'm sure that's just a joke so there we go that's it me done for the day um, and I'll see you on the next video thanks for being here bye for now <laughs>